and they just threw the baby out with the bathwater panic at the open down 850 points and then they rallied the market is this going to be some sort of scenario well if this is going to be a scenario and right now the keys welcome to access a trader the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success profitability and longevity thank you for joining us here's dan shapiro to help you find your edge master your process and own your future hey guys good evening everybody welcome to another edition of uh, the access of trader.com uh nightly update hope everybody is uh doing well so you know here we are i mean you know basically uh the narrative hasn't changed uh we talked about yesterday um there was a very uninterested if you watched the video last night uh for four and a half five hours nothing was going on and that bollinger band that we spoke about last night in the video you know sparked a little short covering rally into the close but, but we talk about it all the time if you look at the action uh, ever since we broke down through 50-day moving average on january the third for the first time you'll notice that again 75 percent of all the moves in the last uh, since the, the year started has been to the downside action and any time that we've seen any type of move below the 50-day moving average going into supply two things have happened number one uh, if they did rally they got stuffed into supply and number two they never took out the previous day's high so even though yesterday we had a you know, pretty impressive and we talked about that last night in the video pretty impressive uh rally into the close uh, the one thing that notably didn't happen was we never took out the previous day's high and that's a very very important uh basic thing in uh the most you know basic technical analysis you have for any stock to go higher any etf any index it needs to take out the previous day's high right and build above that previous day's high or if the market is going to go lower it needs to take out the previous day's low and build lower so again the fact that we are spending now one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven uh trading days right so it's almost three weeks 11 trading days below the 50-day moving average we talked about it last night yeah was there a possibility we had a dead cat bounce today yeah okay whatever but again the the overall uh sentiment it was still to the downside and we talked about that that 317 level was gonna be a very very important part of what we're seeing here for at least the future and you know today's sell-off was extreme was very violent uh was extreme um you had some big players reporting earnings after the close we'll get to that in a second but we closed right at the 317 level and you know normally when you're a technician you turn around and you say well tomorrow's gonna be a very very important level well it, it kind of is but it's gonna be a little bit different now because now you have microsoft coming out with earnings after the close right stock is down uh not a lot you know stock is down another four or five points after the close google you know was you know was kind of a big one that's really taking you know taking things apart uh down 250 points uh for the day and now when you look at the cues we're we're not having the conversation anymore at 317 let's see what happens if they defend now we're having the conversation here uh at 312 and now all the technology stocks that got you know pretty beat down today uh and have been pretty much beat down since uh since january they're continuing to sell off right you got if you have another five points on the cues you're you're going to have uh, you know, you're going to have more technical damage. So, for example, Tesla got crushed today. And we'll, we'll talk about the pivots in a second. You know, Tesla got crushed today. It, it, the stock was down 121 points. It's down another 15 points after the close. You, you look at uh, Amazon today, right? Amazon got, you know, got hit for 133 points. And, you know, the stock is getting massacred again after the close as well. Same thing with Netflix, NVIDIA, and everything that broke down. And I, I, I think now a lot of the new traders that got into this business in the last three to five years now you're starting to kind of you kind of figure out what all these old farts right right all these old farts have been talking about for years and years and years it's cool everybody loves a bull market right and and, and a bull market is something that every trader no matter how long they've been trading eventually will you know experience and it's it's euphoria but at the same time is and i've always maintained this fact unless you've been in this business for a very long time and experienced a bull market experienced a bear market well now experienced a pandemic right and a mortgage crisis everything in between you can't really appreciate the fruits of your labor until you've kind of run through the ringer and these are facts right these are extreme facts and a lot of traders will never value 
of what's going on in, in their really, really bull happy times until we go through on something like this. And I've always maintained that the bull market is the fruits of your labor, right? That's the cherry on top. You, you make your foundation in a bear cycle, call this what you want, bear market, bear cycle, bear scenario, call it whatever you'd like, you know, potato, potato, it doesn't make a difference. But the point is the bull market is always going to be that cherry on top, the frosting, okay? on what you've set your foundation for when things got hard. And, it, and the most important part is when you have a market this decisive and this aggressive, of course you're going to have some updates. We've been talking about that nonstop in the three weeks we've been underneath the 50 day moving average, but your job is to, is to identify the sentiment. And if you're not trading uh, both sides of the market, primarily, especially on the short side of, you know, where the market is giving some pretty aggressive pulls, you know, it's very, very tough to kind of navigate this tape because, again, we, we don't know how long this is going to last, right? We've I've seen bull markets that last for six, seven years, but I've seen two or three different bear markets that lasted for two, three years. You know, this is only, what, month four? We're in March. So the question is, again, if you, if you are serious about this business and you want to do this for more than a trade or more than a week or more than a year, you have to at some point turn around and say, how much effort am I really putting into getting the development that I need? And again, it has nothing to do with me. You know, you could be trading crypto, you could be trading Forex, uh, minis, whatever the case may be. But at some point you have to turn around and say, am I using every aspect of my potential? Am I using everything, every tool at my disposal to put myself in a situation that I'm prepared for the bull market? right? I'm prepared for the bear market. I'm prepared for the distribution market. I'm prepared for everything that the market throws at me so I could actually act as if I am a professional trader instead of somebody buying stock in a bull market, banging my chest how, how everything is great, right? The, the shit is not sweet all the time, right? It's not the day at the beach. It's not roses. And again, unless you went through what every trader has gone through for the last 25, 30 years that you've heard of, have met or whatever the case may be, you really can't appreciate the good times because you think it's normal until you went through and gravitated through the bad times to build your character, to build your foundation, to build your process and to kind of mold you into the trader that you want to be 10, 15, 20 years down the line. So yes, I get it. A lot of you guys have never seen a bear market, right? Have never seen a bear scenario. Um, it's something new to you. It's, it's scary because you've never seen it. It's like driving a car the first time when you're 16 years old. The first time you got in, behind a, a, a wheel, it's scary. It's terrifying. Merging onto the highway. What are you, crazy? There's no way I can merge into the highway. Now, when you're 45, 47, 53, 62 years old, you're driving on the highway. You're not even paying attention to the road because it's normal. First time it's scary, eventually it becomes normal. And this is, again, what the journey is. It's scary at first. It becomes normal as putting on socks, washing your face and brushing your teeth. But the most important point is you have to be prepared and not to get caught off guard with things that you've only heard of, but didn't put in the effort to kind of put yourself in a situation that you were protected so you can not only survive a scenario like this, but put yourself in a position that you can thrive. And again, like I've said all the time, it is new, it is scary, but you know what? it's gonna get easier in time. And you have to use this type of market, this type of experience that said, hey, I finally put this under my belt, right? This is my experience level. This is, I'm learning. So next time around, and it could be five years from now, 15 years down the line, you're experienced this. So you already know what to do. So you're not taken off guard. And that's the most important part. How long this the sell cycle is gonna last, we don't know, right? Tomorrow, I think if the bulls are going to be anywhere, right? Anywhere of striking distance for a bounce, this gap down has to be bought, right? And if you guys remember that last really aggressive panic uh, panic gap down that was bought, it was right here. You guys remember this? This was where the Ukraine uh, got invaded, right? That was this candle. That was the same thing that we had, this really aggressive uh, bottom channel, right? And this is kind of where we talk about uh, having a, you know, having a, a reference point, right? So if you guys remember, we had, we had that day, it put in a low of uh, 318, right? And that day, and that day, for example, it started bouncing, okay? It started bouncing because we had the news that we were waiting for, we finally got the invasion, and they just threw the baby out with the bathwater, panic at the open, down 850 points, and then they rallied the market. Is this going to be some sort of scenario? Well, if this is gonna be a scenario, and right now the queues 
are trading roughly 312 after the close. If that's gonna be the same type of scenario, and again, we're only speculating because we're only trying to get prepared for it. What's gonna to have to happen is if we go from 312 and we reclaim 317, then yes, I do believe this will be kind of one of those throw the baby out with the bathwater type of bounces. But again, there's no guarantees, but if you don't at least play devil's advocate and don't prepare for it, then you're probably gonna sit there idle, missing out on a both case scenario. So going into tomorrow, let's see how the market opens up. Uh, a lot of you guys, uh, we are short. I mean, we've been short buys now uh, for three weeks or so, ever since we closed uh, below the 50-day moving average. Again, some really aggressive moves today. Uh, we talked about Tesla last night. Look, that nobody in their right mind expected a 135 point move today nobody I, you know I, I i knew we talked about this 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 tight range um it was a good trade it could have been a phenomenal trade but again who in their right mind is saying to themselves well this channel is going to break right 1009 upside 973 downside channels are getting tight something needs to give right so tesla finally breaks down below this 973 channel we've been talking about this thing and again how can you possibly prepare for a 134 point move, right? Absolutely impossible. But again, I know some of you guys are still writing it down. Um, I got out way too early, but boy, oh boy, I was happy then. I can't imagine what would have been happening if, if, <laughs> if I would have still happened, but boy, oh boy, this is a phenomenal move. Congratulations for all you guys. They were pounding this thing. When this thing was at 920, 930, they were pounding the 850 weeklies. and. After the close, look, look at Tesla right now trading 860. Man, man, oh man, boy, they, they definitely got uh, paid there. Netflix continues to get hammered. Yesterday was the big pivot here. 210 for builds below can flush. They're coming for the 200 puts. Uh, they, it confirmed today, 204, really nice move. Stock is trading 194 uh, after the close. This thing never triggered, this thing never triggered. And I go, sweet move, 955 on deck. No, 855 on deck now. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. For all you guys are still holding a runner, uh, absolutely congratulations. Beautiful move on uh, beautiful move on uh, Netflix. Uh, where's my uh, ISRG? Did I, did I not put an ISRG? I thought I did. Uh, am I going crazy? Where's my, didn't I not put ISRG? We've been short ISRG the whole day. For some reason, I don't see ISRG. Why am, I, why am I not seeing it? I don't know. Anyway, ISRG finally cracked. Uh, I, I thought it was on there. I could be wrong. Uh, ISRG finally cracked. We've been talking about this for a couple of days. Finally broke down short from the 250 area. This thing looks like it's going to go lower, uh, trading down to the 241s after the close. Uh, but more important point is, again, going into tomorrow's session is see how the bulls react, right? See how the bulls react from the bottom of the range. If at some point we start putting in higher highs throughout the open, uh, excuse me, throughout the morning, and they start reclaiming the bottom of this range, right? If they start reclaiming the bottom of this range here, again, so, you know, let's let's see if they can reclaim the 317 back for a pretty aggressive uh, dead cat bounce. If not, again, the sell cycle continues. The most important part is uh, Microsoft's getting hit uh, after the close. You got Google getting destroyed after the close. Texas Instruments uh, get, Texas Instruments getting destroyed after the close. You got Juniper getting hit after the close. Not a pretty picture. Even uh, ch the only one that survived, again, hella high water, Chipotle and the cockroaches. If there's a nuclear bomb, nuclear anything, the only two things that are going to su survive are those damn cockroaches and those damn uh, burritos. Tomorrow, another bi busy session uh, for earnings. You got, uh, let me see what we got. Let me see what we got. Tomorrow, we got, uh, you got Boeing, right? You got Boeing, you got Facebook, you got PayPal, you got Qualcomm. Uh, Pinterest, TDOC, Spotify, a lot of stuff going on. Las Vegas Sands, and the next day you got Apple, Amazon, Twitter, and everything else in between. So crazy market. Uh, again, it's very scary the first time around. Not so much as you get t as time goes by. The most important thing, guys, remember everybody's gone through it. Everybody will go through it after you and way after you after that, generation after generation. The most important part is don't get frustrated, don't get scared. Don't get nervous. It's part of the cycle. It's part of your development. And eventually, it'll be part of your everyday routine. Guys, God bless. Wish you all the best. And I will see you all tomorrow.